So for number one, going back to evaluating, is what's given x or y? X, which means we're finding y. So put that value in for all of your x's. So we would be squaring 7 to get 49. When you multiply 49 and 5, would you get? As a final answer or just as a multiplier? I feel like that was the final answer. Okay. And then when you subtract, you would get 233. You would write it as g of x equals or g of 7 equals 233. Either one. questions on that first one. Number four, going back to domain and range. Let's see if we remember some of our vocab. Is this a discrete or a continuous function? So this one's continuous because it has lines. Discrete would be like three, where it's separate. So because it's continuous, then we're going to write it like this. X, Y, the line, or set that. And you're looking for this left or this right, lowest, highest. So for this left was negative five, for this right was and then lowest was at negative 5, highest was at 6. So that should have been how our domain and range looked. So if you did the same thing for number three, I would go back and change that really fast. Because they should look different. Questions on that one? Okay, this last one. Um, so you'll need three things here. One, this is shifted up because this has a line that says plus two. Remember, you're always comparing it to this. This is less steep because of the one half. And then you can add in like a C or another point. Um, I'm just going to rewrite exactly what's given. The graph, and you don't have to write all of this. You can just simplify it or summarize it. Of G of X was reflected. If you said like the slope was reflected, that was fine. You don't have to change your words completely. And that is because of the negative. So just got a little hectic there. Questions on that one? So we're going to talk about um, calendar stuff. While we're doing that, if you have your laptop, take that out. Go to the graphing Desmos calculator. We're going to be using that a lot today. If you don't, not right now, but after lunch, then I'll let you grab your phone and you can use that. But use your computer if you have it. While you are pulling that up, also look at your course calendar. 
Notice that it is short. There are a few reasons for that. One, this is only one objective. This objective doesn't really fit well with other objectives, so we're kind of doing this before we do like other units. So it's like 6.5, not quite a whole unit, but still a whole unit type thing. Um, also notice that instead of the test, we're going to be doing an activity. So today I'm going to be showing you how to do the things you need to do on the calculator on Desmos. So you're going to have time to practice. Next class we're going to practice a little bit more. You're going to take your quiz. And then the class after that, you're going to use all the practice skills um, to do this activity. The pink sheet you have in front of you has the directions to both the Desmos and the calculator versions. You'll have a choice as to which one you want to use, calculator, Desmos, maybe a mixture of both, that's up to you. You will have this for the activity, you will not have this for the quiz. So you'll need to know these steps or be able to ask a friend um, for these steps. Um, I'm jumping around. And then, like I said earlier, your Khan Academy quizzes for this will be due next Friday. So questions on any of that first. Also, um, starting kind of this unit, but also the next unit. Um, those of you who did not finish the unit six tests, your name is on this board over here, to which it'll stay until you finish. And if this unit wasn't so short, I would say by the test of this, but because it's so short and we're going to finish it next week, it's not enough time. So moving forward, it would be whenever we take a test, if you don't finish it in that class period, that flex day, whatever, you'll have until the next flex, uh, the next test to get that done. Otherwise, I'm going to be grading it as is. Um, if you're looking on the board, make sure you're looking in this first set of class codes, not the second set that's on my after kids. Um, so for this unit, for unit six, sorry, you'll have until we take the unit seven test. So you have a little bit of time, but I wouldn't wait that long. Definitely come get that done as soon as possible. Um, questions on that first? Those of you that started the retake process last class slash finished it will be retaking on the 10th next Friday, which is our next flex day. Those of you who still need to finish retake process, come see me before after school. Come get that done as soon as possible. If all your retake stuff is done by next Friday, you can retake. If not, you'll need to come see me before after school and do that process after school. Questions on any of that? So the first couple problems we do is going to be me showing you how to do this. So feel a little long, or feel a little boring. Just pay attention, ask questions if you get stuck. So we're going to first do this on the calculator. So let's reset our calculators first. Second plus seven one two. Remember that the steps I'm about to show you are on your pink sheet, so you can follow along in that, as well as in your notes. So be following along there as well. Um, so before we actually talk about what this unit is and things like that, let's do this unit three review. Mine should be clear. This review. Right. So here we're given a table of values. We're given an equation. So we're going to put each of these values in for x and figure out what y is. So we would set each one up. Y equals three times whatever the x value is minus four and figure out what that equals. I'm going to just set mine up. You can figure out the actual answer. 
So go ahead and do that for each one. So y equals 3 times negative 1 minus 4, y equals 3 times 0 minus 4, and so on and so forth. And then what would 3 times negative 2 minus 4 give us? Matrix. Okay. 3 times negative 1 minus 4. Did you have to use it? Mm -hmm. 3 times 0 minus 4. Minus four. Yep. Three times one minus four. Three. And three times two minus four. And notice that each of these are going down by three. That's your, I'm sorry, going up by three. That's your slope at play. It's going up one, right one. For all of these, um, if we wanted to do the same thing, but maybe not do it by hand because that was a little time consuming, put it in the calculator. Go into y equals up at the top. Type in that equation, negative 2x plus 5. Remember, you can use this for x and this for alpha. Go into your table, second graph, and then find those values, negative 4, negative 2, you may have to scroll. So 13, 9, 5, 1, negative 3, and go ahead and write those down. Um, so if we were doing the same pattern, you almost want to say it's going down by 4, but it's skipping by 2. So the slope is still the same. It's going down by 2 each time, where it's not the same as the middle. Okay. So this unit, or this lesson, is about okay. finding lines that best fit our set of data. It may not fit exactly like these. It may have a line where the points don't fit accurately or they're surrounded by it but they don't actually touch it. So that's what we're going to be finding or doing today. We are going to do this process again here in a moment. Did you get it? Yeah, no. Okay. Um, so we're going to first do this on the calculator so you see how that works. Then we're going to do it on Desmos. So follow along on your calculator first. If you don't have your calculator, make sure you grab it. Great. Before we do anything on our calculator, um, we're given a set of data points. One's time spent studying. One's the grade whoever received. These aren't for anyone. Like you guys, it's random data. You have to decide on which one depends on the other? Does time spent studying depend on the grade, or does grades uh, depend on time spent studying? <clears throat> what do we think? Nature? Yeah. So whichever one depends on the other, that's going to be your Y, and the other one X. Once you know which which one is x, which one is y, you can put these into your calculator. So we're going to go into stat, which is right next to the arrows. And then it's already on edit, so you can, you're going to hit 1 or enter. And you're going to get a list um, 
really, it's a table. L1 is where you're going to put X's. L2 is where you're going to put Y's. So you can do one of two things. Either type in the number and hit enter and it'll go to the next spot. Or you can type in the number and hit the down arrow and it'll go to the next spot. So go ahead and start filling in your L1 and L2. Wait, you put X's and L1. When you're finished, look back up here. Can you make sure you're putting this in your calculator? After you have all your numbers, you're going to go back into stat. So if you are just now doing this, I need me to go back to this. I'll do that. To go back to stat, I'm sorry, before you do that. If you already did that, it's okay. A um, couple things on this. When you put in numbers, make sure these last lines are at the same point. If they're not, you may have missed a number or put in too many. Um, if you ever need to delete a number, if you clear it out, sorry, delete it, you can put in whichever one you want. Or just retype over whatever number. Right? So now everyone go into stat. And we're going to go to the next one over to the right where it says calc or calculate. Which of these things look somewhat familiar or somewhat like something we've already done? Matthew? Five. Uh, we have talked about cubic functions, yes. Anything else look familiar? Or something related to something we just talked about last unit? Eight. Eight. What about eight looks familiar? Sort of, except it's switched because it has A plus B, X, and usually we have an M. Lily? Four. Looks almost like ry equals mx plus b, but they have ax instead of mx. It's the same thing. So in the calculator, they use a instead of m. I think m is for something else in the calculator, which is why they use that. So you can either scroll down to four and hit enter, or just hit four. Right? And then this should look the same, where your x list says L1, your Y list says L2. Sometimes that changes, but if we all reset our calculator, then that should be the same. Does anyone not say that? Then we're going to go down to store regression equation, is what that stands for, and hit alpha trace. A window will pop up with different Y equations. Pick your favorite one, or I just go with the first one. You can either hit the number you want or just hit enter. And then you can scroll down to calculate and hit enter or just keep hitting enter until your screen changes. Anyone not get to the screen? Anyone 
adjust the screen not on that. And remember, you guys have these instructions on your pink sheet as well for after trips. Anyone else? Great. So what this just gave us is our line that best fits this set of data. It may not touch all the points, it may not go through all the points, but these points best surrounds this or is closely surrounding this line. So on the next page, at the top, we're going to write down this. Not all of the decimals, but we're going to write it in this format. I would say use at least two decimal places, round to two decimal places. So y equals 6.01x plus 53.62. Fit. Now we're going to use that to make predictions with the things given. So I'm going to show you two different ways on how you can do this in the calculator. Then we're going to take the same problem and do it all again in Desmos. And you can decide on which one you like to do better or want to do better. Um, so for the zero hours, that is our x. We're looking for our y. So one way we could do this is to, and this is on your pink sheet at the bottom, store that value for x. So we're going to type in 0. So from this screen, I did hit 0. And then this STO right above on, get a little arrow, and then x. And then hit enter. It'll look like nothing really happened. But what it did is it put that zero in for your x everywhere in the calculator. Then we want that equation we stored. So go back and hit alpha trace. Wherever you chose, or whichever one you chose, go back and choose that same one. And then hit enter again. And what it did was it took that equation with all of the decimals, put zero in for x, and it solved it for us. So our answer would be 53.6. Now, some of these, yes, you could do by hand, but it'll be a lot of you doing it by hand, which is why I'm showing you how to do it in the calculator, how to do it in Desmos. Yes, me too. we were in stat, we went to stat the second time. If you don't store it in the store regression equation, the rest of this will not work. So make sure you do that, otherwise you'll be wondering why it's not working. Okay. Um, the next part, 
I'm going to show you how to do on the graph. So there are different ways to do each of these things. So graph it. After it's graphed, you're going to go into second trace. And we're looking for a value. So number one, I'll hit enter. And that value was six. So put in six and hit enter. Okay. So that y value would be your next answer. 89.69 if we're rounded. Questions on how we did either of those so far? The last question is asking how many hours is needed to study to get greater than 100%. So that one's going to be a little different. We now need our y value to be greater than 100. So there's a couple different things you could do. Um, one is putting it into the y equals, but then you have to play with the zoom function. It is not. Um, this next part is also a lot, but we're going to do this instead because this you could do for all of the problems. So go into your table, second graph. Our y value needs to be greater than 100%. So as we're looking at these numbers, they start to go up. Scroll until you see more than 100. So we can say at eight hours, this would definitely work, but some of the answers or some of the x values were decimals. So if we wanted to find a decimal, we'd have to change this a bit. So we're going to go into second window, change this to eight. And instead of counting by ones, let's count it by 0.5. After you have 8 and 0.5, go back into your table. Second graph. And then we can see at 7.5, it's not quite there. 8 is still there, so maybe it's somewhere between 7.5 and 8. So let's change it again. Go back to second window. It can stay at 7.5, that's fine, but now let's change this to maybe 0.1. Okay. Then after you change it to 0.1, go back to the table, second graph. Then you see a little bit more clearly that 7.8, it goes over 100, so we can do that. If you wanted to know the 100th, you could do it again, but I'm not going to. The answers we found before were grades, so the label or unit was percentage. But this one we're looking for hours, so we need to make sure that we know we're looking for hours. The calculator is a lot, but if you like the calculator's methods, that's fine. We're going to do the same problem with the same things in Desmos. So you have your computer up on the graphing calculator. The first thing we're going to do is put in a table. You're going to hit the plus. Remember the instructions for this are on your notes as well as on the team sheet if you get lost. You hit the plus, add a table. Go ahead and type in the same data points from the first 
page in there. you want to try the next step reading it on your own you're welcome to do that if you want to wait for me um, look back up here when you're finished After you get all of the data points in, same thing, make sure they match up. In the next open slot, you're going to type these in either using your keyboard or the Desmos keyboard. Y and then the number one. It automatically makes this a subset. Then you need this tilde. If you're typing it on your computer, bless you, it's right above tab, so shift and then that button above tab will get you that same thing. M and then X1, again it will do the subset, plus G. So what's nice about this is it'll look very similar to our slope intercept form map, except it's y1, x1 because of our table. Our table has x1, y1, and that's the only way this would work. It'll automatically give you your slope and your y-intercept. But we knew that already because we just did it in the calculator. But if you were using Desmos like for a different problem, you would use those and write it in the format y equals mx plus b. Again, round to two decimal places. Then to find the answers, there are a couple different ways to do that. So one, you can use a table. Type in exactly what you see here in the next line. y equals 6.0122x plus... 53.6159. So it's the same M and B you guys have, just in Y equals MX plus B format. Go into the gear wheel at the top, or wherever yours is. When you click that, Table option should appear. Make yours into a table. Zero is already there. So you would put that answer, which we already did and know. You could add in six at the bottom. And then that would tell you your next answer. To find the y value using this method, it's kind of like a guessing game. Because you need this to be greater than 100, but you can't put in y values. So you have to start guessing. Um, maybe it's 10. Put that in, see if that's the answer you want. If not, go down, play with it. So we said 8, that's close. 7, 7.8. And so on and so forth. And you would just kind of guess and play around with it like that. So that's one way to do that. Other way, and you may prefer this way instead. On your original table, there should be this little magnifying plus. Hit that. Here we go. 
you'll be able to see where those points are. So as I was talking about before, they don't really touch the line or go through it, but this line kind of surrounds these points. And what you could do instead of making the table that we just did is find an intersection point. So we know that x equals 0. So I'm going to type that in. And I'm going to find where this line and this line intersect. And that will give me my y value that I'm looking for. I could do the same thing for 6. Find where those lines intersect. That would be my y value. This also works for your the last one, where we have to find y is greater than 100. So if I say y equals 100, find where this line and my original intersect. And that x value, 7.715, if we wanted to be exact, would be the number of hours needed. So whether you use Desmos the table, Desmos the find where they intersect, the calculator and the table, the calculator and the store method, the calculator and the graph method, none of that matters. As long as you're able to do it in one of those ways just so I can see who prefers Desmos. Okay, so I'm assuming the others prefer the calculator. Who was last? Do you have a question? Okay. All right, so we're going to do um, two more because there's something else I need to show you. One with both the calculator and Desmos. Whether you just use Desmos or just use the calculator is completely up to you. You choose which one you like and want to use better. Um, before we do that, do we have any questions? So we're going to skip to the next page. I'm going to do three and four at the bottom because these are a little different. When you have years, you have to change your graph a little bit or change your table a little bit. Whatever the first year is, no matter what year it actually says, you're going to change it to be zero. Every year after that is how many years has it been since the first year? So from 1920 to 1925, how many years has it been? Five. Now this next one is not from 1925, but from 1920 to 1930, how many years has that been? Ten. 1920 to 1935? Fifteen. Then you can look and see, are all of these counting by five? Don't assume, because sometimes they skip values. If everything is counting by fives, then you can change all your numbers to count by five. So 20, 25, and so on and so forth. So I'm going to do this one in Desmos and the next one back in the calculator, just because this has a lot of stuff we have to put in. After you've changed all your years, you're going to be using the numbers we just changed and the decimals, not the 1920. Don't use those. Okay. In Desmos, you can do one of two things, either clear out, delete all the stuff you've done, or if you want to keep it, just get rid of the numbers in the table. If, or you can keep it and just add another table. If you keep it and add another table, these are going to become x2, y2 instead of x1, y1. So when you type it in, retype it in, you have to change the numbers. So just keep that in mind.
Um, what's also nice about Desmos is once you start to put the pattern in, it'll try to guess to see is this the pattern you want and once you keep hitting enter it'll just fill it in for you. You just can't do the same thing with Y's unfortunately. Be careful with your decimals, double check them. all in. If you want to move on to the next step, you can. If you want to wait for me, just look back up here. After you have Everything typed in, make sure you have your equation in the next one. Y1, the tilde or the stated line, mx1 plus b. Is it already doing this on the calculator? Or is it doing it on one? This is going to be the equation you write on the line of best fit. So um, y equals 0.23x plus 56.06. Make sure you write that down. And it's the same as right at the very bottom. Is 2010 our X or our Y? And how many years has it been from 1920 to 2010? So then I'm going to use the x equals method and type in x equals 90, hit my magnifying glass so I can see where they intersect. And 70.03, 77.03 would be that number. The 
label or unit here is in years, so you can say life expectancy in years. For your original table, yes. And then once you hit it, it'll disappear. Okay. Other questions on that one? Okay. I'm going to do the next one in the calculator for those of you maybe still doing it on the calculator, whether you do it on the calculator or in decimals is up to you. Same thing for number four, change all your years. What's nice about anytime you see years that start at 2000, the first one's always zero like normal, but then every year after is whatever it ends with. So two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, eight. Still works the same if you two years after, four years after, six years after, so on and so forth. So I'm going to show you how to do this in the calculator. Those of you doing this on Desmos will have to use your steps in your notes slash on the pink sheet to continue that process. So I'm going to go back into step, go back into edit. So if you are on your calculator, you'll still have that data from before. You'll have to go up to the top and hit clear and then scroll down and then it will put it out. and then put that data in. If you're doing it in the calculator, your next step would be to go back to stat, scroll to the right to calc, down to four or hit four. Make sure these are the same, L1, L2. Store this as alpha trace and hit enter into your screen changes. If you're on Desmos, you should get the same thing once you type in your um, Y1 tilde M X1 plus B. 179.61, super rounding, 4X plus 4, 553.93. Five, five, you can write that into your line of best fit for number four. How many years has it been from 2000 to 
we're trying to do the graph piece, it won't show up, so you have to like zoom out and find it. So in this case, I would just use the store method, 20 SEO for store X, and then grab your equation from alpha trace. So 8146.37 in millions. Would be that answer. on calculator things or Desmos things before I let you practice. Lisa. So you guys have uh, about 25 minutes left. I want you to pick one question from the remaining practice problems in those notes. Do that using the calculator or Desmos, up to you. You can work together, but you should be working. Then if you have time after that, you can start your Khan Academy. If you'd rather practice more using Desmos, using the calculator, you can do that as well. Let me know if you need my help. If you're having difficulty, if you have questions, I'll be around.